Hey folks, Rich Burness here from Brighter Daisy in Christchurch. This is an update to the workflow tutorial released earlier today, which just extends it to show if you wanted to apply seven day reminders where people may have multiple items due in seven days, how to send them just one email with a list of the tasks that are due in those seven days or at that seven day period. Um, so this is, um, I'll go back to the SharePoint list just to show how I've extended that. So now we've got eight tasks in the list. Um, some are closed, some are active. So I put a choice column here and we've got a task due date and we've got the single person column there. If you are looking at this for the first time, you haven't seen the previous clip before, they'll put that in the link in the description. Make sure you watch that first and then you can extend your workflow with this. So add those columns if you need to, just have, make sure you've got a due date, status and single person column here as well. So I will um, just run through the actions that I've added here, uh, first of all, uh, versus building it with you. Um, so if we start the recurrence, that's going to run every day. And then the first action that we're going to want to put into the workflow is get future time. And then you're going to want to rig that up for seven days. So just like in the 714 day reminder email tutorial, same step. And then you're going to bring in a substring step. So you just add an action. So for, for get future time, just type in get future time. Um, and it will show you there. Um, just make sure you set it for date and then for a substring obviously you just go subs and then you've got it and you can see substring there right um, and substring what you're going to do is um, you're going to put the text in as the future date step starting position of zero at the right at the beginning and you're going to go extend because a get future time does y y y y dash mm dash dd then uh, hours and minutes and all that jazz that you don't need if you've got a SharePoint column that is just a date column so just set that up then in your get items all open you are going to want to put an O data filter query into your action and it's going to be the name of your um, date column for me it's task due date and it's EQ for equals single uh, speech mark then the substring value close the single speech mark and then add in and task status which is the name of your choice field eq for equals active again with text and string values we always put them in single quotes integers numbers we don't um, so that's just covered so basically this is going to get me all the items from this list that are due in seven days and still active we don't want to find content that isn't like that um, and then we run through the same steps as before selecting the emails composing unique emails parsing the JSON uh, that's all in the previous uh, video that was on linked in the chat or description for this one and then extend your apply to each and then you're going to want to change this get item filters action um, and again this time we've got three filters in there right for first of all we only want to get filters for the composed message person so same filter as before single person slash email capital E capital M equals that output so the compose action and then also add in task due date EQ the substring same as before and task status equals active now they could probably loop all this in with a, another select statement for filter um, your um, action of this as well you could do that um, I haven't because I've made it super easy to do um, but it is probably more heavy on the processing because you're going to go through your get items twice. Um, but if you want to go wild, um, that'll be the, one of the later tutorials I put out where you don't use the get items for the second pass through. You use your existing get items with a, uh, a, um, a filter on your apply to each variable or uh, array that you've already captured um, in your workflow. Um, then you run that. Um, and again, you're going to do your HTML table. No changes there and no changes to your task email summary. And then that's going to send you, um, for me, let's test this. So we'll click test on that one. Now we should, uh, whilst that's running. Okay, so 22nd of the 9th is seven days from my time zone. There's one, two. Okay, so we should only be getting two. And then there'll be a message going not to Sean, because that's on the 18th. And then not 
to me there because that's due on the 17th so in the past so they're behind so that's things we could look at as another advance as well like dates tasks are due from now to seven days is another way to do things like that so that can be another workflow we could look at uh, but if we go back to our run we'll see that we only found one unique user which should be me and then in the items that we found we should only be seeing two um, two items so tester one and tester seven uh, in our list here so tester seven active 22nd of the ninth and tester one 22nd of the ninth and then that sent a nice email through to us which isn't well formatted but could look better um, but I'll leave that to you guys to, to Google up or Bing your um, CSS and power automate tables um, but that's um, how you do it with your um, task uh, due dates with the person unique people with a task due date and only active tasks I hope that's helped um, please let me know if that was useful cheers bye